Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on my tutorial videos in quantum statistics and we're now going to look at the partition function. This is video number 16 and the previous video to this is the video where I derived the Boltzmann factor. So let's just have a quick reminder. We know that the probability of event 1 or event S1 is equal to 1 over Z times the Boltzmann factor which is e to the minus um, E1 over KT. All right, that's what the partition, or that's what the probability is. For this here, is called this is called the Boltzmann factor, and this is called well, z is called the partition function. So how do we calculate what the partition function it is? Is well, how how we do it is we say all probabilities must sum to one. So 1 over z seems to be a normalization factor. All right, it seems to be a normalization factor. So what, what do we do with it? So let's take the sum of the probabilities. So it's going to be equal to 1 over z times the sum over s of e to the minus e sub s over kt and we know that that must sum to 1 or rearranging it we know that z is equal to the sum over s e to the minus e sub s over kt for this the sum of the Boltzmann factors is our partition function So what does that mean? So the partition function is the sum of the Boltzmann factors. And what you can the way the best way to think about it is it estimates the number of available states. Okay, so I'm going to write down now that we know the, the we know what the partition function is, we can now write down the full probability of an event occurring. So the event the probability of event S occurring is equal to the sum over n of e to the minus e sub n over kt close bracket times the Boltzmann factor that's the probability of event s occurring so note that this here note that it approaches zero as n approaches infinity. So it contributes less and less and less. As n goes to infinity. So it becomes less important as s goes to, or as n goes to infinity. So z and for that reason, Z is often difficult, is difficult to calculate. So usually we only, we talk about the first few terms. That's what we do instead. Instead of calculating the whole of Z, we calculate the first few terms because once we have the first few terms, we essentially have the whole thing. All right. Now, what happens if we go plot this whole function? this probability factor, including the Boltzmann factor and the partition function. Well, if we have P sub S, which is our probability on the y-axis, and on the x-axis, we have va we have arbitrary units of energy. Well, not, not arbitrary at all, actually. We're going to have them in terms of KT, uh, 2KT, so 3KT. What you'll have is this exponential decay, like this, okay? So that the, the probability of an event occurring decays exponentially as you increase the energy. Okay, so now the important thing here is that, and this is very important, the, the reason or the kind of, the, the way, way to look at the partition function is it z, it counts the number of available states. Okay, 
and counts the number of available states. And the reason this is important is, if we remember, in, uh, if we remember previously, we, we, we were looking to calculate the multiplicity. Okay, and now you'll see later on that because Z essentially counts the number of available states, it becomes a very important quantity and it becomes, we can treat it in, in analogous fashion as we do uh, entropy. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel and if you're in a good mood, you might also click an ad. Thank you.